Hey everyone, uh, I've had a few requests to add commentary to my guide, so we'll try it out. I'll leave the text on so you can mute the video if you like. Let me know in the comments if you prefer guides with or without commentary. So this guide's going to cover the basics, um, but also some more tips and tricks that we've learned along the way. First, some tips on what to take from supply bins. So for the early supply drops, I recommend taking your abilities over your weapons. The starter pistol is good enough for the initial phase, and you will likely have three supply drops before tackling the first real objective. So there will be a chance to get weapons. There's a grading system for buffs. You can use this to get a general hint on how good your options are from grey to gold. These are some of my top picks. Infinite Clip and Sentry are great. Together they're insane. Strife is really good. Just target the strongest enemy with it. Feedback loop is great if you've got strong abilities such as Malva and Pill. This is uncommon but really underrated. Uh, it can take shields off. Having your ultimate more often is obviously very beneficial. And I don't like running out of ammo so I tend to pick those too. Let me know in the comments what some of your favourite Sublime picks are. So playing with each operator you'll upgrade abilities as you go. It's worth noting that by using the correct weapon class for your operator their ultimate will charge more quickly on each kill. You can check each character in the menu here Why by going into Customize, Progression and checking which weapon it is. So for Mongoose and Orbit it's SMG. Assault Rifle for Malva and Pill. Strix and Ram are going to be using shotguns. And that leaves the sniper rifles for Kite and Brissa. So some tips on defeating enemies. Uh, most have weak spots, usually their head. Your hit marker turns yellow, you found a weak spot. So for these, it's got their chest and on their back. For the Minotaurs, they also have a weak spot on their backpack. Some enemies are invulnerable if you get this shield debuff. You need to target this shield first, destroy that, and then you can kill the enemy. Listen out for these audio cues about side supply bins. And then if you look at this icon, it will give you a direction of where that supply bin is. They are in fixed locations around, but they'll appear randomly. So you'll start to learn where these locations are. There are some areas which can only be accessed using operator abilities, such as high climb, exosuit or explosives. Um, but even if you don't have those characters, there can often be a way around. I'll show you some of the ones we've found. Shout out to my friend Gold for helping me find a lot of these. This one could be quite fiddly to get up. You just need to climb up the first rock and then look to the right and spam to climb the next one. This one you need to face sideways on to the here so that you can not mount over the whole thing and then just jump on this here and spam space to climb up you can also open these explosive doors using some barrels from the environment Get to cover. obviously rams mines and mongoose's grenades also work orbit's grenade will also work. It takes a little bit longer to trigger, but once these little things explode, it will open it. Or you can even use Seeker Mines, if you can attract some Seeker Mines to the door. Let them explode on the door, it'll open, and almost kill you in the process. So even if you don't get a notification of a supply bin, there is a chance there'll still be a bin there, or a cat. The cats replenish abilities and give you a percentage towards your ultimate. So if you're not all filled up, it's worth going to those. There's also hidden beavers that give you the same replenish of abilities and ultimate that the cats do. We 
we've managed to find three of these so far, so let us know in the comments if you've found one that we haven't shown. Beaver. Okay, so supply bins. For this one, you need to destroy the spikes in the center. Ram's axes are really good for this. If you stand directly under, they'll fall back down so you can view collect the axe. And then you can just clear them pretty quickly. And just kill the remaining enemies. Mine planted. So as you can see, Kite's Mine is even better. You can uh, clear it in one, no enemies even spawned. So this bin requires you to authenticate the supply bin quickly to prevent enemies respawning. If you don't get into the middle and authenticate and clear all the enemies, they just respawn. So you need to get in there. If you get a gardener spawn as well, you need to get rid of him first because otherwise he'll spawn those plants in the middle and they'll just mess you up while you're trying to authenticate. I've just used my ult here to clear him quick. Get that bin authenticated. So for this one, when the adamants spawn, one will have focus fire. He also has like a flame above his head to identify him. Focus him first and get him killed. Then you can kill the other one. If you kill the other one first, it will split into two enemies, which then in turn split into another two enemies. Just makes it even take a bit longer. For this one, just focus the ball in the centre. So try and do some damage to it from the start. And then the enemies spawn back out. Clear some of those enemies. And then just get back to the center as soon as you can and do some more damage. Be back in a okay, so for this one, you can authenticate the bins fairly early on. And you just need to kill the enemies. You could just nab the contents of the bin and run away. Get to the next one. Uh, for this one, the bin won't activate until you've killed the Minotaur, so you can get in there and kill the Minotaur first. And then the bins will, you can authenticate the bin then. For this one you need to destroy these falling objects before they reach the ground. Try and obviously get all of them, but if you only get one of each pair, that, that's also pretty good because it'll only spawn a weak enemy. If you allow both in a pair to get to the ground, it'll spawn an adamant or a shard skin or something nasty. So for this one, these crystals that land, you need to get those destroyed before they turn into an enemy. So just clear these as quickly as possible. Onto the cyborg still. So to conserve ammo, use your pistol to take down its armor. Then you can switch to primary to deal damage when the shield is down. When these enemies spawn, clear them quickly and then go back to focusing the cyborg still. Too many enemies, it's going to get a bit messy in here. Once it gets down to 30% health, ignore the spawn of minotaurs. And just focus him.
we missed him by a sliver here, but I'm going to ignore the Minotaurs. I'm just going to keep focusing the still, because once he's dead, the Minotaurs are irrelevant. I really like using Ram and he's great for dealing with stilts because both his abilities do damage to shields and his ult does a lot of damage to health as well. So you can see he's down to about 30% here and boom, he's gone. So sample collection. The initial spawn location is always the same. So it's off the plane wing here where the propeller is lying on the ground and then subsequent spawns are always clockwise from that initial spawn so the second spawn will be there so starting at the propeller then clockwise round to that one and then here and then there finally so two should focus on spawn killing while the other kills the shard skin and collects the container ram is really good for this again because he can one shot kill the shard skin with his axe and then sprint with the container Nice and quick. So again, you want to kill the bomber dog, axe the shard skin, collect the container, and then sprint it back. You can get this done nice and fast. I'll show you how to spawn camp these enemies. So if you're doing this, kill this first spawn, and immediately move around to the second spawn. Clear all of those, move on to the third spawn. There's a bit more distance to the fourth spawn, so if you take a bit too long on there, you sometimes might miss the spawn. But we can still clear them up. And then we're back round to the start and we can repeat, just keep moving clockwise round. So for the transmutator, you only need to kill the highlighted enemies, the other enemies can be ignored. And I like using the cover on the left hand side. There is a similar piece of cover on the right hand side, but it doesn't give you quite a good angle as this one does. Uh, if you've got a longer range weapon, you can use it to shoot across the other side to help out over there. I haven't, so I'm going to use a pistol just to help out on the other side. But I'm just ignoring all the other enemies, because as soon as we've killed enough of these target enemies, then the center will open up and it will, all the other enemies will die. So once the target's open, use your pistol on it to conserve ammo. It's always going to take three phases. We've tried with alternates and stuff to get it done quicker, but it always seems to take three phases. So you might as well just save ammo and use your pistol. And then back to cover again. You can kill some of these enemies, but they're just going to respawn. I'll just deal with the ones that flank you, like these two. I'm just going to have to deal with these because otherwise they are going to shoot at me. Then go back to my cover and deal with the highlighted enemies again. So be aware of the damage indicator on the floor during this phase because it will kill you. You need to move away from that area and stay away. And then just focus the centre, get some bullets into it. And then repeat this until he's dead. It should just be one more phase after this. So research station. After the first couple of downloads are complete, one person should focus the objective and then the other two can clear the balconies. After the first couple, you're going to start building up a lot of enemies on the balcony, so you really need to start focusing them. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be almost impossible to stay on the objective without getting sniped and blown up by rockets. So just keep circling the area, clearing the balcony, and some of the other enemies, they're going to respawn anyway, so don't worry too much about those. The balcony is the focus. Just makes life easier for the person who's doing the objective. Got 
Again, Ram's Axe is really good at dealing with the Minotaurs, so when they appear, if you're Ram, get your axe on their back. A couple of axes and he's dead. You can also use his ultimate, that's obviously really good, especially if they're grouped together. I've used it just to get in here and do the revive. Alva's good on the objective because she can heal herself, so you can throw mid bags down and just hold down the area and capture the objective. So grinder, you've got to kill the bomber dogs, collect the spine and shoot it at the center. If everyone focuses the center when it's vulnerable, you can do it in two phases quite easily. So kill the bomber dog, pick it up. Shoot at the center to get the shield down. And then everyone should be laying into this thing. If we all lay into it, as you can see, it's down in two phases. If you do let a bomber dog through, don't panic. There's plenty of cover around, so lots of this hard cover around the edge, you want to get to that. As you can see, it's going to do a lot of damage to you, so you want to be hiding behind one of these where it can't hit you. So for the fusion reactor, we're going to kill the enemy spawns first, then generate a ball and shoot it into the reactor at the center. It's important to clear these waves first on each phase, so there'll be three phases. Just clear these main enemies first that spawn around the outer edge, just makes life a bit easier. And then while someone's generating a ball, you need to stand in front to attract the seeker mines to you, so that they're, they're not attacking the person on the ball. Stay in front of them here like this, clearing as many mines as you can or attracting them to you. And then once the ball appears you want to shoot that into the center. Job done. So the ball will attract to one player, so if you try to stay together it makes life easier. So as you can see it's attracted to the guy to my left. I need to get round and then get an angle to shoot it in. If we all stay together where you generate the ball it's much easier. Soul Probe Defense, you're given an objective to defend, you need to keep it protected from small explosive enemies, the Seeker Mines, and also spawns of waves of enemies. The best thing to do really is stay away from the probe that you're defending, uh, attract Seeker Mines to you, and then go off and deal with the enemies as well. If you have one person dealing with the Seeker Mines in the middle, the other two can be around the edges, defeating the enemies. And we just keep them all away from the objective and you'll be good. The field research is complete. Thank you for your assistance. Power stones. Destroy the three power stones, then damage the teleporting orb in the center. damage the middle. So this is quite simple but if you assign a power stone to each player for them to focus it gives you longer to damage the orb in the center because all of the uh, power stones will get destroyed at the same time and then you can spend longer damaging the ball and then when they reappear just damage them again. If you don't have other players to communicate with then you're just going to have to do your best to do, do the power stones yourself. When you destroy a power stone, it will kill most of the enemies in the middle, so they don't build up too much. Just focus the power stones. So onto the bosses. In the room, the stilts are going to generate these shards, which slow you down and deal damage. So destroy any that are blocking the path around the edge of the arena. Keep the edge clear, and then you can keep moving around the outer edge, dealing damage to the stilt. During this phase, keep an eye on the behemoth because he will slam the ground, causing three piles of fire. You can dodge them by staying in between the three piles. 
Once the stilt is dead, we're going to clear any remaining shards before then attacking the behemoth. This just makes it easier when the ads spawn that we're not getting trapped on those. So once that stilt's dead, begin attacking the behemoth. He's got these three weak spots. We need to destroy all three of those. Once we've got rid of those, he'll turn yellow, and now we can damage him anywhere. Just lay into him with everything you got. When he goes underground, watch the flame trail on the floor, and you can see which player he's tracking. He'll leap up and smash the ground, and you don't want to be there when he does that. So keep an eye on that flame trail and don't be there. Once enough damage is dealt to him, he'll become invulnerable and fill the room with smoke. The enemies are then going to spawn at his location, so we're going to deal with them there. Repeat this once more and he should be dead. The next, let's defeat the Queen. So again, the Queen's going to come with a cyborg stilt. We're going to target the stilt first. It's going to spawn these shards that slow you and deal damage, so we want to get rid of those. Clear them from the path around the outer edge of the arena. If they're in the middle, it doesn't matter so much, but we want to be able to move around the outer edge, dealing damage to the stilt. Kill that adamant before it restores itself. So while this is going on, the queen is going to fire purple orbs at you, which you can either shoot or dodge. She also strikes you with this disorientation. You have to move your mouse side to side to get rid of it. She can also move over the top of you and deal damage. So when the stilt's dead, clear any remaining shards again before attacking the queen. The stilt's dead, so let's just clear these crystals. There's the damage she did out to me by just pathing over me. That's why we don't like the Queen as much, because uh, she does a lot more attacks while you're trying to do stuff. I mean, now we can deal damage to her directly. She has a weak spot, it's the sort of lighter parts of her skin. Once enough damage done, she'll go invulnerable and spawn enemies. We're just going to deal with those as quickly as we can. Repeat this until she's dead. She does also place down this purple area, you'll need to avoid that because it does damage over time while you're in there. This is my sanctuary. How can you be so reckless? That's about it. So if you found this guide useful, please leave a like. If you didn't find it useful, leave a dislike. If you need help or you just want good teammates to play with, join our Discord, lots of us playing it here. I also stream games right here on YouTube, so come and have a chat while I'm gaming, and uh, join my game too, I like playing with viewers, so thanks very much, I'll see you again in the next one.